Hello, and thank you for clicking on my video. Now, if you've seen any of the other videos in this series, you'll know that my name is Alex, and I'm an actor and a writer, and I live here in Tasmania. The story you're about to listen to is another one in my series from Dinosaur Dell, which is a village entirely inhabited by dinosaurs and other prehistoric reptiles. However, this story doesn't actually take place in Dinosaur Dell itself, but just outside, in a rather blustery bay like this one. In fact, the bay behind me leads to the open sea, and beyond that is the mainland of Australia. So I hope you enjoyed this story, which is story number 14 from Dinosaur Dell. The story of Oshin's birthday. Under the volcano. And not too far from the sulphur springs and the pits of tar. In the middle of a forest of tall tree ferns, you'll find some houses where the footpath turns. This is where I live. Tell from the roars, my neighbours are all dinosaurs. I'm Alex the Alxosaurus. Hello. Now, once upon 70 million years ago, wait, which of the stories shall I tell about the dinosaurs living in Dinosaur Dell? The story of Oshin's birthday. If you walk as far as the tree ferns reach, to the east of the dell, you'll find a beach, with warm yellow sands leading down to a bay, where deep blue waves are topped with white spray. And in that bay, where the seaweed's green, lives an ophthalmosaurus, whose name is Oshin. Now that might seem a strange name for a creature of the sea, but as Oshin lives in the ocean, it seems a very good name to me. Now the ocean probably seems a wonderful place to live, doesn't it? It's full of the most extraordinary things. And plus, you never need to have a bath on a Sunday night. Of course, it is full of some extraordinarily scary things too. You probably wouldn't want to come face to face with a giant spider crab, or a fang tooth fish, or a frilled shark, would you? But luckily, Oshin wasn't allowed to go out of the bay into the deep, wide, open ocean where they lived, and none of those creatures ever came near the bay. Instead, amongst the green seaweed of the bay grew a rainbow of corals. Amongst the corals lived bright blue tangfish, striped orange clownfish, and lagoon triggerfish which looked like an artist had painted their scales. There were all sorts of beautiful shells too. Comb murex shells with long delicate spines, and pink and orange conchs, and speckled cowries, spiral trap shells, and windowpane oysters so thin you could see right through them. But despite being surrounded by all of these, Oshin was sometimes very unhappy living in the bay. He wished, with all his heart, that he could live in Dinosaur Dell, with the dinosaurs and pterosaurs. But that just wasn't possible. An ophthalmosaurus like Oshin can't leave the water, you see. He just isn't made to. Where the dinosaurs had legs, and the pterosaurs had wings, Oshin had fins. They made him a very strong, fast swimmer. But there was no way he could visit his friends in the dell for the stream that ran from the dell through the forest and past the giant bamboos to the bay was far too shallow for him to swim in. He was never entirely alone, for he lived with his kindly great-uncle, Horatio Ophthalmosaurus, who took care of his great-nephew. But Horatio was getting on a bit, and spent quite a lot of his days asleep, or talking with his old friend, Captain Hamish Macroplata, about the old days of the Jurassic, when together they were the terrors of the vast Tethys Sea. Cousteau the Plesiosaurus did sometimes go swimming with Oshin, 
but with her flippers she could flip-flop up to the dell as well, so often he found himself all alone. And today he felt especially alone, for tomorrow was his birthday. I'm sure you always look forward to your birthday, don't you? Well, not poor Oshin. If anything, it made him feel even lonelier. He'd never had a real party, you see, because Oshin could not come out of the water to join the dinosaurs on the beach, let alone go to Dinosaur Dell. And the dinosaurs couldn't see or breathe underwater, or even hold their breath for very long, unlike Oshin, who could hold his breath underwater for 20 minutes. Don't you try that. What Oshin really, really, really wanted was a party. He'd heard about all the wonderful parties they had in Dinosaur Dell. Zan Shalsaurus and his family, for example, started the year with a big celebration, with dancing and singing. And you should see the lanterns. We filled the sky with fireworks and bubbles, said Zan. Constable Comsignathus would organise a party in the middle of March for all his friends. Oh, a sheen, to see all the shamrocks decorating the place. It brings a tear to me eye. Lila Lambiosaurus loved the big party her family had after their fast in June. We have fruit and berries and nuts and ice cream and jelly. Randy Coprolite Jr, the Utah Raptor, always threw a huge party in the dell during July. Hot diggity dino, he said. You should see all the stars and stripes hanging in the tree ferns. All summer long, Tracy Triceratops had garden parties amongst her beautiful flowers. And a new bonnet to wear to every one, she told Asheen from the beach one day. Miriam May Asora cooked for all her friends in the autumn. There'd be apples, dates and pomegranates. And my freshly baked honey cake too. And just before winter started, Ritesh Rajasaurus held his party. Every tree in the dell is decorated with lights. It's such a sight, Asheen. I wish you could see it. But Asheen knew he would never get to see it, because he just couldn't get to Dinosaur Dell. That night at tea, he looked very downcast indeed. What's up, my lad? asked Horatio between mouthfuls of skate and squid's knee pie. I wondered if I could have a proper birthday, uncle, just this year. Oh, said Horatio. Didn't you enjoy the little celebration the two of us had last year, my lad? What about that delicious fish cake I baked? Oh, of course, uncle, said Oshin, who didn't want to upset Horatio. I just wondered if maybe this year... I could celebrate with my friends. Poor lad, said Horatio. Tricky thing that, you see. We're not quite like the dinosaurs. These fins of ours are made to swim, you know. We'd never get up on the beach. Tried it once when I was a young ophthalmosaurus, and I didn't get very far. And I've yet to meet a dinosaur who could hold their breath underwater. Asheen sighed. Horatio really didn't like to see his great-nephew so miserable. I tell you what, my lad, there's a beautiful island not too far beyond the bay, lots of warm currents to swim in there, and the tastiest plankton in the ocean. How about I take you there tomorrow? But I'm never allowed to swim out of the bay, said Asheen. Well, you're getting quite grown up now, said Horatio, and so long as you're with me, You'll be quite safe. And Asheen smiled for the first time that day. It wasn't a party with all of his friends, true, but a trip out to an island in the open ocean was definitely something to look forward to. The next morning, he woke very early. The sun had barely risen, and Horatio was still fast asleep in his sea bed. Asheen didn't want to wake him, as excited as he was for his birthday, so he thought he might just swim to the top of the bay for a peek at the open ocean. Now, you remember I mentioned the giant spider crabs 
and the fangtooth fish and the frilled sharks. You remember too that I said that they never came into the bay. Well, there were unfortunately some things that did come into the bay that were most unpleasant. They looked rather like little snails. Now you wouldn't think that was that bad, would you? In fact, they looked quite friendly. Well, in the ordinary way of things, nautiloids are. And that's what these creatures were called. Now, nautiloids are rather peculiar. Not quite squids, and not quite snails. Some have long straight shells, and some have tightly curled up shells, but they all have a lot of tentacles, and most nautiloids are perfectly nice. But there were three that lived in the kelp, just where the bay opened out to the sea, and they were not very nice at all. In fact, they were decidedly naughty. They were the naughty Lloyds, big, middle, and small, and they liked nothing better than to cause mischief. That morning, they were swimming lazily about in the water, rudely blowing bubbles from their bottoms at passing fish, when Ashim appeared. Hello, he said, as he saw the three naughty Lloyds, who swam up curiously. I'm Ashim. And what are you doing here? asked the smallest naughty Lloyd. Now, of course, a naughty Lloyd can't speak. <laughs> that would be ridiculous. But these three naughty Lloyds had learned how to spell things out, using the ink that they could squirt from their bottoms. The question hovered in the water, and then disappeared. I'm looking at the ocean, said Asheen. Today's my birthday, and I get to swim out there with my great uncle. The nautiloids winked at one another. What fun, inked big. Yes, inked middle. You mean you're going swimming after your birthday party, of course, inked small, who was quite the naughtiest nautiloid of all. Oh well, said Asheen, I don't really have birthday parties, you see. Oh dear, inked big. No, inked middle. But why ever not, inked small, wickedly. Because I can't go up on the beach, said Asheen, sadly. But not with my fins, I have to stay in the water. What a shame inked big. Yes, inked middle. But why don't the dinosaurs come to you instead? Inked small, who was now really enjoying himself. Well, said Asheen, thinking, I'm not sure they can. They have to live on land, just like we have to live in the sea. I suppose that could be the reason, inked small. But maybe some of them won't come because, after all, you're not really a proper dinosaur, are you? Asheen was very upset. Of course, inked small. That's only what I heard some of them saying. We think you're better than a silly old dinosaur, inked big. Then I'll never have a proper birthday party, said Asheen, and began to cry. Or rather, he would have begun to cry, but it's very difficult to cry when tears are just salt water and so is the sea. There, there, inked big. There, 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 inked middle. I'll tell you what we'll do, inked small. We'll have our own party, just you and your new friends, the Nautiloids. Oh, really? asked Asheen happily. Of course, inked small. Oh, thank you, said Asheen. I'd love a party with some friends, 
I've heard the dinosaurs talk about jelly and cake and lights and bubbles and bonnets and shamrocks and stars and stripes. Well, I'm sure we could have all of those, Small inked. Why don't you come with us? Where? asked Asheen. Oh, out there, inked Small, waving a tentacle out towards the ocean. Oh, but I mustn't, said Asheen. I have to wait for Great Uncle Horatio, and he's still asleep. Oh, inked Big, sadly. A real friend would come with us, inked Small, slyly. We'll be back before he wakes up. I don't know, said Asheen, doubtfully. I guess he's not our friend, inked Small to Middle and Big. I guess it's a shame the dinosaurs don't like him, but we were going to let him be an honorary nautiloid. Well, I am your friend, I really am, said Asheen. Well then, inked Small, follow us. And one by one, the nautiloids spread their tentacles and swam out of the bay and into the ocean beyond. Asheen thought for a moment. He could be back before his great uncle woke up. It couldn't hurt too much to swim out into the ocean for a bit, and the nautiloids had promised him jelly and cake and lights and bubbles and bonnets and shamrocks and stars and stripes like a proper party. Besides, they were his friends. And with a flip of his tail, he followed them. Out they swam, out through the mangrove swamps, where mudskippers climbed and the shallows where flying fish flew, past fish on fins and fish on flights, past brittle stars and bellum nights. Wait, called Asheen as the naughty Lloyd sped on ahead. What? inked Small crossly. Well, I thought we were having a party. Of course, inked Small. Look, there are your bubbles. Above them in the water, violet sea snails bobbed on the waves on rafts of bubbles. They were very pretty, but Asheen wasn't quite sure they were like the bubbles the dinosaurs blew at their parties. Um, there are your stars and stripes inked small, waving a tentacle at some curiously striped starfish on the seabed. Asheen wasn't quite sure that those were the stars and stripes that Randy the Utah Raptor had meant, but before he could say anything, the three naughty Lloyds squirted ink from their bottoms all over the starfish and jetted away, further out into the deep water of the ocean. Asheen followed them, struggling to keep up, past clams and coralites, past sea anemones and ammonites. Wait! cried Asheen once again. What is it? inked all the nautiloids together. Please can we go a bit slower? Where's the fun in that? inked Small. Well, I'm just a bit out of breath, panted Asheen. Are you not enjoying your birthday? inked Small. Well, how about that birthday bonnet. And he scooped up a huge bonnet snail from the seabed and plonked it on Asheen's head. Yuck! It was so slimy! Ew! Asheen squealed, shaking it off. It's just a joke, inked Big. That's what friends do, inked Middle. We'll make it up to you, inked Small. See that down there? That's a sham rock. Well, it looks like an ordinary rock to me, said Asheen. Look more closely, inked Small. Asheen did, and he was just about to poke the rock with his beak when several fierce-looking spines shot out of its back. It was a venomous toadfish. The naughty Lloyds inked themselves in glee and sped off into the deeper water. Asheen was now quite frightened. He couldn't find the way back, so he had to follow them. Past huge tuna fish and trilobites, past gurnard fish and strange goniatites. 
time for a surprise, inked Small. I don't like surprises, said Asheen, fighting back the tears. Oh, but I thought you wanted a cake. How about a lovely sponge? And Small pushed him into a huge sea sponge, which angrily squirted jets of cold water at him. <laughs> How about some jelly? inked Big, and shoved Asheen towards the tentacles of a large bloom of jellyfish. He only just managed to dodge their stinging tentacles. Still on they went, past the sponges and underwater stalagmites, past electric eels and encrinites. Asheen wished he could remember the way back, but he was scared to be left alone, and all he could do was to follow the nautiloids. They were further out and deeper down than Asheen had ever thought possible. And now, your lights, inked Small, though Asheen couldn't see what he was saying in the gloom. Suddenly, all around them, the sea lit up with points of light. Not warm, comforting lights, but eerie, cold, red, blue and green lights. The lights were attached to fish with huge mouths and sharp teeth, flashlight fish and lantern fish, angler fish and viper fish. Asheen didn't know where he was swimming now, he just wanted to get away from the fierce looking fish. The nautiloids were having great fun, they squirted ink everywhere, which was their version of laughing themselves silly. Asheen swam as fast as he could, past the fish with their lures and the fish with their lights, and right into a shoal of sharks with big appetites. Oh, help! he cried. The sharks were looking at him hungrily, and if sharks had lips, they would have been licking them. But the nautiloids were nowhere in sight. Oh no! cried Asheen, and flipping his tail as hard as he could, he swam for a narrow opening in one of the large rocks on the sea floor and squeezed himself in. And just in time, for the razor-sharp teeth of one of the sharks snapped shut right behind him. Oh dear, he said, feeling very sorry for himself. For outside, the sharks were beginning to circle his hiding place. Poor Asheen. He closed his eyes and wished he could wake up back in the bay. But when he woke up, he was still in his rocky hiding place. Except now, there was one huge eye looking at him through the opening. He'd really had his fish and chips now, he thought. But suddenly, he heard a voice he knew. What are you up to in there, my lad? We've been looking for you everywhere. It was great Uncle Horatio, and he'd brought his friend, Captain Hamish Macroplata, with him. Pick on someone your own size, laddie, said the captain as a toothy shark swam towards Asheen's hiding place, and he walloped him with one of his powerful flippers. Asheen had never been so happy to see his great uncle and his friend. Wow, he said, as Captain Macroplata dispatched a couple more sharks with powerful whacks. Hey, there's life in the old reptile yet, said the captain, enjoying himself. Save one for me, said great uncle Horatio and he swatted a shark with his big tail. The shark crash-landed into a clump of sea anemones, which was by chance where the nautiloids had hidden themselves. It didn't take long for the shark to recover from being knocked on his head, and he chased after the frightened nautiloids, who disappeared in a trail of ink with <coughs> hanging in the water until it melted away. Oh, thank you, thank you, Thank you, said Asheen, hugging his great uncle and the captain tight with his little flippers. I'm sorry, great uncle Horatio. Those naughty Lloyds said they were my friends and that they'd give me a proper party, but I shouldn't have gone with them. We said soonest mended, said great uncle Horatio. Aye, anyway, laddie, said the captain. It's your birthday. I think it's time for a hootenanny. He means a party, explained Great Uncle Horatio. Let's stop by that island I promised you a trip to. Unless, of course, you've had enough of the open ocean for one birthday. 
Ashin shook his head. He felt safe now, swimming between his great uncle and the captain. On the way, they told him the proper names of all the things he had seen with the Nautiloids, and how to stay safe around them. And when they reached the island, well, what a surprise! An underwater party greeted their eyes. All their dinosaur friends stood on the sea bed, each with a snorkel and mask on their head. The snorkels were long, hollow stems of bamboo, which each of the dinosaurs breathed easily through. And to help them to see underwater as well, were masks made of clear window pane oyster shell. Oh, my best invention in, well, in forever, said Professor Pteranodon. She's really quite clever. And on floating place settings, a picnic for tea. Sandwiches and octopies bobbed on the sea. There were bubbles and bonnets and lights everywhere. Proper jelly and cake. Well, I should know. I was there. And with little Asheen surrounded by friends, my birthday story happily ends. For as lights lit the island, each dinosaur cried, Happy birthday, Asheen! And so many more! Here's a little bit more about my story. Asheen is an ophthalmosaurus, which was a type of ichthyosaur, dolphin-shaped marine reptiles that lived at the same time as the dinosaurs. Ophthalmosaurus was six metres, that's almost 20 feet long, and caught squid to eat in his long, toothless beak. He had very large eyes, 23 centimetres or 9 inches across. They were surrounded by a ring of bone, which probably helped to protect them in deep water, where the water pressure would push against them. His large eyes probably meant he could see very well in deep water too, where there wasn't much light. There are many other things in the sea that appear in Asheen's story. You probably know things like starfish, sponges and tuna fish, but there are also things you might never have heard of. Ammonites had spiral shells. The shells had different chambers inside them, and by letting air in and out of the chambers, the ammonite could control how deep in the water it sat. Belemnites were a little like squid, with ten tentacles covered in suckers. Brittle stars are related to starfish. They have five long arms which they can regrow if they are lost. Encrinites are rocks which are made up of the dead remains of strange animals called sea lilies. Goniatites were ancestors of Ammonites that lived in the Permian period, before even the dinosaurs. Gurnards are strange fish that have large fins they can spread like a bird's wings so they can glide above the surface of the water. They also have six long spines they use to walk on, on the seabed. Mudskippers are little brownish-green fish with bulging eyes that can survive both in water and on the land. They use their specially developed fins to walk by skipping across the mud where they live. Trilobites lived in the Permian period too. They had hard shells and bodies that were divided into segments. Now, here are some fun things you could try at your own dinosaur birthday party. Fossil footprint cookies. Ask a grown-up to help you make these. You will need 400 grams of plain flour, 200 grams of butter, 200 grams of caster sugar, one egg, vanilla essence, and your favourite dinosaur toys. Mix the flour, sugar and butter in a bowl, then add the egg and vanilla essence to make a smooth dough. Ask your grown-up to preheat an oven to 180 degrees Celsius, or 356 degrees Fahrenheit. Make the dough into splodgy cookies and put them on a baking tray. Then, using the feet of your dinosaur toys, 
make tracks of dinosaur footprints. Let your grown-up bake them in the oven for 10 to 15 minutes until they're nice and golden brown, and then, once they've cooled down, enjoy them with your friends. Stick the tail on the dinosaur. All you need for this is a big picture of a dinosaur with no tail. Ask a tame grown-up to help you make some paper tails and put a blob of sticky tack on the end of them. Blindfold your friends, spin them round and take it in turns to stick the tail on the dinosaur. The one who gets the closest wins. Cretaceous Carnivore One person is the hungry Cretaceous Carnivore and stands in the middle of the play area. Everyone else is a harmless herbivore and stands at one end of the area. The aim of the game is for the herbivores to run from one end of the play area to the other without being caught by the carnivore. But whenever a player is caught, they become a carnivore too and help to catch the herbivores. Well, thank you for joining me for a story from Dinosaur Dell. I hope that you enjoyed listening to it as much as I enjoyed writing it and telling it. Now, one day I'd obviously like to turn all of my Dinosaur Dell stories into storybooks that anyone can read at home, perhaps using some of the character drawings and photos of Tasmania that you saw on the screen while I was reading the story. I'd love to hear from you. So if you enjoyed the story, or you'd just like to say hello, or even better, tell me who your favorite dinosaur is, please let me know in the comments below, or do visit my website, www.alexscottfairley.com. And hopefully, I'll see you next time for another story from Dinosaur Dell. Bye for now.